What's up everybody, JJ here. Today we're going to be checking out the Creality Sonic Pad. It's a device that they say should make installing Clipper extremely easy and controlling Clipper. It gives you this whole screen. It's a full tablet device that can control up to four printers with Clipper. So we're going to put that to the test, see how it compares to the old method of using a single board computer like this. This is an Orange Pi or Raspberry Pi would be more common if those were available. So today we're going to go through the installation process, see just how easy it is, and see how it compares to using one of these old methods. First up, we should answer the question of what is Clipper firmware? So the firmware is what runs on your printer, makes it do all the motion and do all the printing. 99% of printers come with Marlin firmware stock, and there's one or two options that come with Clipper out of the box. If you don't know if your printer has Clipper, it comes with Marlin. While Marlin firmware runs entirely on the microcontroller inside of your 3D printer, Clipper needs a companion computer running Linux. Typically you would use a Raspberry Pi. Nowadays you can't find those at MSRP, so there's a lot of alternatives. This is an Orange Pi Zero 2. I've got one of these running on a different board, or a device like this that uses a different processor. You could really use any Linux computer. So there's several different ways you can set it up, but you do always need a separate computer talking to the microcontroller inside of your printer. So your next question should be, is it really worth it to install Clipper? Because your printer's already running Marlin, it's already printing. This takes some effort and cost. The two big headline features people always go back to are Input Shaper and Pressure Advance. Since you've got this separate computer doing all the mathematical computations and sending only the G-code directly over to the microcontroller to make it do all the controls, you can do some pretty advanced things. A big one is Input Shaper. That uses a small accelerometer to measure the residences of your printer, so then the computer can run some advanced math computations. I don't fully understand how it works, but it reduces the ringing of your printer. So you can reach higher speeds and not get those artifacts that you used to get on your printer. The next one is Pressure Advance, which has recently come to Marlin, and that just helps with sharp corners. It's something about the flow rate as it slows down and speeds back up again. There's several different methods of how you can tune it in, and it just makes your prints look amazing. The third big performance feature is just that it can go a lot faster. You have this separate computer that does all the mathematical computations, and the microcontroller in here just moves hardware. So you can send a lot more commands much faster. But beyond the performance side of things, there's a lot of ease of use situations that makes this a lot better. Since this computer is going to be connected to the internet, you have a whole web page where you can control things, upload files directly instead of using your micro SD card anymore. You also get better monitoring of things. You can change the configuration of your printer. Since it's just a text file on your computer, you can go in there and change some pretty advanced settings it's just in a text file, so you change that and then hit restart and it reboots and uses that new config file. Whereas with Marlin, if you want to change any config, you, it's a whole process of recompiling the entire firmware, uploading it to the printer. And I can't cover all the features here because they keep adding new ones. So there's always new updates coming out and new features being added. But now let's go back to the Sonic Pad. When it comes to the unboxing, you really get everything you need straight out of the box. They've got several different adapters for different international plugs, and it even comes with a really nice accelerometer. It's fully enclosed, so there's way less chance of damaging it. Normally, people order this type of circuit board, and you have to solder on the pins yourself, wire it up to the GPIO pins of your Raspberry Pi, whereas this is a single plug. This makes things super easy to use. When it comes to setting up the Sonic Pad, I did run into my first issue with setting up the Wi-Fi, and I have seen other people mention this issue online, and I passed this along to Creality. Hopefully they can fix it in a future update. But if the name of your Wi-Fi or your Wi-Fi password has any special characters in it, for some reason I put an apostrophe in our Wi-Fi name when I set it up, and I think that's what's causing the issue here. Luckily there is an Ethernet port on the back of this Sonic Pad, so I've just been using it with Ethernet anyway. So the issue only really arises with people who plan to use Wi-Fi and have a special character in their Wi-Fi network name or password. And hopefully that should be something they can fix in future updates. The next step is getting the firmware actually loaded onto your 3D printer. You've got two options here depending on which type of printer you have. This is the Ender 5S1. So for this one you could just use the USB connection here, which was super easy. You get everything set up, turn the printer off, turn it back on, and you know the firmware is flashed because the screen on the front doesn't turn on, it just stays black. That's going to happen on most 3D printers once you install Clipper. Since the microcontroller is just talking to your computer now, it won't be talking directly to its own screen. Some screens might turn back on, some screens like on the Kingroon KP3S, it just perpetually says booting now, and so that's how I knew that Clipper was correctly installed. And that's really all it is to get this set up. It took maybe 30 minutes and a lot of that time was me starting something and then walking away while it was flashing firmware or doing some other step. So I think it could have been faster if I was really trying to push the speed of it. And you don't even need a separate computer, all you need is this and your 3D printer 
and you can get it up and running. Comparing that to the more traditional Raspberry Pi method, with this you need a computer, you need a way to image a micro SD card, I use Raspberry Pi Imager. Next you need an SSH client, I use PuTTY, that's another free one. Then you'll need a FTP client, for that I use WinSCP, that's another free file transfer protocol, and you've got to use all those. There's a lot of great tutorials online, I've got one if you want to go through it. I think it's still a great way to do it and a good way to learn Linux and a brief introduction to using Raspberry Pis. It's not super hard, but it is in depth and it takes a while to do. There's a reason why this Orange Pi Zero 02 is sitting here and not connected up to a 3D printer. Because it would take a lot of effort and I keep putting it off maybe a week down the road, maybe a week down the road. This on the other hand, I went ahead and set it up and it's already running. Once you do have this set up, you will want to go into the advanced settings. That's where they hide all the good stuff. You're going to want to do a PID tuning on both the hot end and the bed. You only have to do a PID tuning after you change something. If you put a new heater on your printer, change that. If you put a new bed on here to a vastly different type of material, you might want to run a PID tuning. Luckily, it's really easy and automated and you don't need to do that that often. Next up is measuring resonances. This is that input shaper I was talking about earlier. They make it super easy to do and luckily this cable can disconnect from the accelerometer. So I mounted it onto the print head because you will want to rerun this if you move your printer around a lot. So it's going to have different resonances here versus on the ground, it's tile versus a different table. So if you're moving it around a lot, you will want to rerun that to get your best results possible. I think most people will usually set their printer on a table and leave it there. So for that, you could run it once and then take off the accelerometer. The next thing you might want to do is access the web interface here. And luckily, both of them are installed. You've got both Fluid and Mainsail. Those are your two web interface options. They're both great. They're both feature rich. They both keep coming out with new features. Which one you use really comes down to preference. I like using Fluid more. Some other YouTubers like using Mainsail more. So it's all a preference. I think try them both because they are so easy to use. To access these, go onto your computer's browser or even your phone's browser and navigate to the specific IP address for your device. If you go to the base address, you'll open up Fluid. If you add a colon 8819 onto the end of that address, that'll take you to the main sale. From here, you can do things like changing your config files if you want to change your firmware settings here, or generally doing more advanced things like uploading files directly onto that web page and it'll send it directly over to the Sonic Pad. There are so many advanced things you can do here, but this isn't the video to cover it. We're really trying to cover the Sonic Pad here. I will leave you with one last clipper tip. I will link this website that goes through all of the advanced tuning options for really any printer, but some of the things are specific to using Clipper. So if you really want to get the most out of your 3D printer, this is the website I would recommend. So the next big feature of the Sonic Pad is the ability to control up to four printers at the same time. There are four USB ports here. One could be used for a camera, but if you want four printers, you won't have a camera. So if you do have several printers and you want to control it all from one easy to use device, the Sonic Pad is really a great option. So now let's get on to the print results. Oh, here's some examples of before and after showing just how good these things look. My biggest issue specifically with this Ender 5S1 was that there was too much ringing in the prints. It's a box frame, but there's still a lot of ringing that came through into the parts. Now with input shaper and this accelerometer on here, it really cuts down almost all of your ringing and you can print silk filaments really quickly now and get really great results out of it. The last thing to talk about here is price. It comes in at around $150 and that's a really good price for what you're getting here. If you were to try to create a price alternative for this, you'd need first a Raspberry Pi or some sort of Pi alternative. You'd need a large seven inch touchscreen, a custom made enclosure like this, which you could just 3D print one. You'd need an accelerometer. You'd need a power supply and adding up all those things could easily be around hundred dollars. And it takes a lot of time and effort to get all those configured, get Clipper installed on this, get that firmware flashed over to your machine. So the price really seems pretty competitive especially if you could control up to four printers off of this. I don't have four printers ready to be set up with Clipper right now, so I didn't fully test out that feature there, but I will do it in a future video and show you in a short. So far, even connected up to one printer, I'm enjoying it, and I think $150 is really worth it for what hardware you get here and how easy it makes it to get into Clipper. For the power users out there who really want who, to dive into that, who want to be working with these single board computers, and I used to think I was one of those, but this device has really convinced me otherwise that convenience really is worth it at a certain point. I think that just about sums up my impressions of this. It's really impressed me in the first couple weeks of using it. Also, be sure to let me know if you have a Creality Sonic Pad or an alternative to it. 
Is it working as well for you as it is for me? Is there something I missed and maybe I didn't test it out? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. But that wraps up this video. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.